number one in the nation in batting average, number two in home runs, and that was really on display Thursday night. They hit three home runs in the first three innings and went on to just continue to hit. They have seven hitters in their starting lineup, hitting over 400. However, they did have four scoreless innings after that, which is only the third time this season that has happened. It was Jennings, Sanders, and Torres homering for the Oklahoma Sooners, and this was the bottom of the seventh with two down. Campbell Bagshaw goes deep to break up the no-hitter and the shutout. Final score 6-1, Oklahoma. The Kansas Jayhawks hoping to take some momentum into game two. Oklahoma led by their fine head coach. There aren't many head coaches in America that get a cheer from their crowd as she comes out with the starting lineups, but Patty Gasso certainly deserves it. 30th year at Oklahoma, seven national championships, including the last three in a row. Just a little bit of a change in the uh, Oklahoma lineup as T.R.A. Jennings moves down to number three. They will see Katie Brooks in the circle for the Kansas Jayhawks, and Katie has really made a breakthrough this year. Why is she so good this season? Yeah, she's 10-2. and two. A 1.82 ERA. She worked in the offseason to get stronger and she's staying healthy. First pitch is a strike to Jada Coleman, the center fielder. Coleman with a pair of hits on Thursday night, scored a run in the first inning on that home run. Down low, one and one. It was a pretty good wind blowing out to left field on Thursday night, and the wind has died just a little bit here on Friday, but still going out pretty strong to left field. So don't be surprised if we see more fireworks here in game two. It's a beautiful day here at Arrocha Ballpark. Just misses that outside corner. Look at old glory there in left field. Blowing straight out. Two one pitch now to the leadoff hitter, Jada Coleman. Into left field. Limbaugh goes back and it's gone. The power surge continues for the Sooners. Katie Brooks just elevates a little bit there. It's belt high, middle of the plate. She sends it opposite field, and obviously the wind's going to help with that, um, even if you miss hit it a little bit. Jada Coleman, she's been so strong for the Sooners for multiple years, and that's what you want to see right off the bat. Alyssa Brito moves up to number two in the lineup. She hit third on Thursday night. Swing and a miss. Brito was held hitless in game one. Does not happen very often when you have a four in front of your batting average. Brooks misses outside, one and one. And I think the key here, Leaf, is, you know, we just... You don't want to give up the big, big innings. Eliminate as much as you can. Come back, get an out. And as you see there, another base hit. Taken into left field. Rideau has her first hit of the series. And now it's T.R.A. Jennings, who hit that first inning home run. On Thursday night, she was second in the lineup, third tonight with a runner on. Strike called. Five of their hitters are in the top 10 of the Big 12 standings for batting average right now. Every hitter you see is going to have their strengths. You want to see her keep the ball down, spot it on the corners, and see what she can get from there. Outside. Oh. 
Just misses there. Two and one. Yeah, that's a good pitch. That's right where you want to be. I don't. I don't know if I'd want to be any closer. Um, maybe the zone will expand as the game goes on. Uh, but really, good ball placement. Well, back two and two. Did you feel like the wind affected the way that pitchers pitched you, depending on the wind? I don't, you know, I think the wind really mattered when the ball got up into the air, but as far as the, the rubber is only 43 feet out, so I didn't think it made that much of a difference. But with that wind blowing out left, would she try to stay away from inside here on Jennings? I just think in general I'd probably stay away <laughs> from Jennings. I don't, On a calm day. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I don't necessarily know if it's the wind. 3-2 um. pitch fouled back. Good point. Saves the line. Yeah, Jennings is just going to foul that pitch off. That's on the outer part of plate. That's a great 3 2 pitch by Katie Brooks. Up the middle, base hit into center field. The Sooners will have runners. Now at second and third. Good hustle from Tiara Jennings. That throw went through. She was on her way to second base. That pitch is on the outside part of the plate. She hits it off the end of her bat. If I'm Katie Brooks, there's really nothing you can do there. That's just a good piece of hitting by a great hitter for the Sooners offense. That's right where you want to be. You want to get ground balls, keep the ball in the ballpark. Quick conference from the Kansas players. As the number four hitter Cassidy Pickering will step in. Pickering was the number nine hitter on Thursday night. Delivered a couple of base hits and an RBI. Two in scoring position for her now. Outside one and zero. Oh. We talked about the day. Just a perfect day. 74 degrees. Most of clear skies. Sellout crowd. Strike call. One and one. Pickering's just a freshman and she's doing so well for them. On the ground, Kripe gloves it, goes to first, run will score. Well, you said keep it on the ground and keep it in the ballpark. Job done there. As the Sooners now with one down and a runner at third for Riley Boone. You see Anderson playing in. Boone will do everything. Yesterday she showed bunt a couple times um, in her two at bats. She swings it as well. Uh, great speed. So you have to be aware of those things when you're on defense. And respect that. Base hit and a run scored. Ashton Anderson just passed her diving attempt. So Boone drives in another. And the Sooners added their lead. 
the second baseman, number 30, Alina Perez. Anderson makes a great attempt there, just can't get there quick enough, leaves her feet. That's scored a hit, hard hit ball in the 5 6 hole. So three runs across for Alina Torres, runner at first. Torres with a home run in the third inning on Thursday night. Sooner struck early with two runs on Thursday night. They have three here. Torres fouls it back. Torres went on an absolute terror last week. She hit five for eight in their series against Baylor and 10 RBIs. I believe a strike was just called against Torres. It's 0-2 now. I believe they might have called the runner for leaving early, potentially leave. Thank you. Yeah. Outside one and two. So base is clear and two out. Down low, two and one. You see Brooks is trying to work down in the zone there. Down again, three and two. Take a look at this again. Riley Boone at first base. Yeah, Should you he, a little early there. Yeah, you're not supposed to leave until the ball leave it, leaves the pitcher's hands. So um, from that look, it looks like he did call her leaving a little early. Torres draws a walk. So Ella Parker, designated here, will step in. Two down now, runner at first. This is low, one and oh. And an early conference for Katie Brooks, what would be the message here? I would like her to work ahead a little bit more. Um, don't get behind in counts. When you get behind in counts, then you have to come in the zone, and that's when they're going to be aggressive. They're not going to get cheated on their swings. We've seen that in game one. So maybe spot the ball a little better, work on getting ahead, eliminate the walks, and see, see where you can go from there. Brooks looks in now, 1-0 count with two down. This is the outside corner, 2-0. And, oh. and you can tell Brooks is working, you know, she's trying to ride a fine line of not keeping the ball in the middle of the plate, but she's trying to find a corner. It might take an inning or two, but you'd like to see her make that adjustment a little earlier. This is outside again, 3-0. Walk to Parker. And there are two on now with two down. And Sydney Sanders, who homered on Thursday night.
outside, 1-0. Strike call. One on one. I would like to assume the Sooners are going to be patient. They've seen her throw a lot of balls. Um, so see a strike, which is what Sanders just did. And if it comes back in the zone, then take advantage of it. But right now, she's struggling to find the strike zone. In the right field. Good play by Linda. Battling the sun and the wind. Bagshaw with that home run. On Thursday night to break up the no hitter and the shutout they will see Nicole May in the circle and how good is Nicole May. She leads the Sooners in wins and games started she held she's held right handed hitters this season to a 129 average she's not doing bad. Ball just misses so we see five infielders right now for the Sooners. Three on the left hand side of the infield. So, a defensive shift for Limbaugh, who swings through that one, one and one. Yeah, they've read her spray chart, I would <laughs> like to assume. Um, they're not going to give her anything inside. They want her to hit to the left side of the field. They're playing to that. Up high, did not go. Two and one. Looks like Jada Coleman is taking kind of the second base position, if you will. The Torres kind of moving over to a hybrid shortstop, perhaps. So no. Yeah, they're covering up the 5-6 hole with T.R. Jennings. Well, it takes it down the left field line, foul. So no right fielder right now, if you will. I don't think she's going to see anything inside. <laughs> It's good to see Limbaugh back in the lineup. Strike three called. Good pitch from Nicole May. <laughs> Nicole May comes out. That's that's on the chalk. That's going to be a hard pitch to hit. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that one. That's a great. What was it? One two o oh, two pitch. One two pitch. Um, Tough pitch to hit, though. One down. Nice play from Jennings at short. Linda got a lot of ball there, but Jennings is so good at shortstop. Yeah, she extends her hands on that swing, drives it opposite field, but Jennings is just so good over there. She gets a great read on it. So it's Lurk Moore for Kansas. On the ground to third. Rito throws it across. It's one, two, three for Kansas in the bottom of the first. Good crowd, including Big J here to Rocha Ballpark in Lawrence. Oklahoma sent eight batters to the plate in the first inning, so that will bring up number nine hitter, Riley Ludlam, catcher. It's always good to see Big J at the ballpark making friends. Them reach base on Thursday night, scored a run. Brooks misses outside. One and one. What well, has to bring an extra electricity to even to the players when you see a capacity crowd, people standing room only around the outside, just number one team in the country coming to town. Yeah, it's always good to see the number one team in the country. It's packed. It's beautiful. I see a lot of kiddos up there, a lot of young girls wishing to become what they're seeing on the field today, which is absolutely great. That's what you want to see every single day. One, two pitch. A ground foul.
Great crowd on Thursday. Good one here. We expect more of the same Saturday afternoon. Sooners obviously a big draw as the number one team in the country, but Kansas has drawn very well this season at home. The top 25. They've had a great season receiving votes in all of the polls. Ranked in all of the polls. Number 24 by ESPN, USA Softball. One two pitch. Hit hard but foul down the left field line. You can see Brooks tried to go inside there. It was a foul ball. I'd expect her to stay out, maybe. Ludlum's a transfer from Thurman. In the center field. Tough play for Price. That one dropped in front of her. I mean, that ball is way off the plate. That's great placement. She hits it off the end of her bat. There's not much you can do there. You see there, that ball is on the chalk. I, she just throws her hands at it and is just good enough to poke it out into center field. Price makes a great decision to let that ball hit in front of her. If she dives for that ball and misses it, it then goes to the fence. So. Back to the top of the order now for Oklahoma. Jada Coleman, who led things off with a home run to left. Shortened up to bunt, but drew it back 1 0. So many of these players can do so many different things. Um, she shows bunt there. Third baseman's working in. Down low, one and one. It's a pretty good spread from one inning to another to lead off with a home run to being asked to square up and bunt, right? Yeah. I'm sure she'll do whatever, but. Absolutely. That's strike one. Works inside there. Something we haven't seen from Katie Brooks a lot there. She tried to work it in on both hitters. These these last two hitters we've seen. Inside, Lyric Moore with a nice snag. Down low, Coleman draws a walk. The third baseman, Alyssa Brito. Alyssa Brito singled in the first. Scored a run. She's now second on their team in home runs. TRA hom homered yesterday. That gave her 13. Aside from Brooks 1 and 0. To me, it just seems like you know Katie Brooks is very aware of the hitter she's facing. She's missing just a hair in spots and she's trying to keep the ball down. Um, however, she's missing the zone a little bit. Low again, 2 and 0. Lyric Moore is going to go take a visit, try to calm her down and have her refocus and getting back to what she does. I 
And I think for the Sooner offense, you know, they're being patient. They've seen a lot of balls. Um, and I think they'll continue to stay that way until they see a few more pitches through the zone. Swing and a miss. She tried to get all of that one there on that 2-0 pitch. You said that they don't get cheated on their hacks, do they? <laughs> they do not. If they have made their mind up, they are, they're a hundred percent in most of the time. So one misses outside three and one now. Full count. Brito is an All-American last year, had a great 2023 campaign. On the ground. Off the glove of Cripe. Everybody's safe. Tough backhand play. Gets around that ball. It's off the end of her bat. Still hit hard to cry. And you know, I think it's hard when you have a lot of balls, uh, a lot of walks, you know, it's hard for your defense too. You want to keep the momentum, stay in the game. And I think we're going to see a pitching change. Lizzie Ludwig trots out of the dugout. We'll take a break and reset as Oklahoma has the bases loaded now with nobody out leading 3 0 over the Kansas Jayhawks here in Lawrence. And Doug. Hello, Ghostbusters. It's Doug of Doug and Limu. We help people customize and save hundreds on car insurance with Liberty Mutual. Anyway, we got a bit of a situation here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sure, I can hold. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters now. Did you know many moisturizers only hydrate your skin? For advanced science that visibly repairs signs of aging, try Olay Regenerous Micro Sculpting Cream. It delivers 10 benefits in every jar for younger looking skin, visibly firming, lifting, and smoothing wrinkles. Olay Regenerist penetrates the skin surface to boost regeneration at the surface cellular level for continuous improvement. To visibly repair signs of aging, try Olay Regenerist. This has been Medifax for Olay. Lizzie Ludwig takes over. In the circle for the Kansas Jayhawks, what can we expect from Lizzie? Yeah, she hasn't thrown a ton this season. She had an injury early on. However, she's going to keep the ball down in the zone, which I think is what Coach Eberling and Coach McFalls would like to see. She was on the Big 12 All-Freshman team last year. She ranked first in the Big 12 in um, home runs allowed last year as well. So you'd like to see some promising things. She was on the top, one of the top throwers on their staff. All right, bases loaded, T.R.A. Jennings. Stepping in. Off speed misses. Jennings with a single in the first quarter run. Tough spot for Ludwig with bases loaded. Nobody out. Top of the second inning here. This is low 2 0. Yeah, and they're just missing. You can see they're trying to keep the ball at the knees, but it's just right below the knees. A very, very small adjustment as they work through it. Outside now, 3-0. and oh. You just don't see the Sooners chase a lot of pitches, do you? They don't. They're going to capitalize on pitches in the zone, but they're going to lay off the ones that they know they probably can't do something with. 
They're not going to chase a whole lot. They're going to make them work. Outside, so Jennings draws a walk. And a run will score. The right fielder, Cassidy Pickering. So the number four hitter, Cassidy Pickering. Grounded out in the first, driving in a run. Outside 1 and 0 to the lefty. Strike call. 1 and 1. There she finds the zone. She works middle in there. Two and one. Outside. That's close, but you can tell right after that pitch, Lyric did move her glove. She does think that's a way, that's a good call. Fouled away, full count now, three and two. Bases loaded, nobody out. Inside, second straight walk issued. By Ludwig brings in another run. And Riley Boone comes to the plate. Boone with a single and an RBI in the first. Through 13 hitters, five walks, you've got to eliminate them. You have to find a way to get out. Out of the way, own one. It's such a fine line against this great hitting team, though, isn't it? Yeah, Riley Boone. She's hitting five hole, 458, and she's Good hitting five hole. Was able to hold back, one and one. Right back up the middle. One run is in. Sooners will hold the second run at third. RBI single for Riley Boone. Middle part of the plate, she drives it right back where it came from. Lena Torres steps to the plate. Still bases loaded. Still nobody out. Sooners with six runs across. Strike one. Side one and one.
Torres homeward last night. She put the ball in play every single time, flew out to center and right a couple times. She's gonna find her zone and take her hacks. No two and one. You see she's trying to mix in an off speed there, just trying to maybe work a little something different, see if it works. Chopped into the ground. Ludwig goes to first. Not in time. Bagshaw did a good job to get up and get that one. That was going to be a tough play all the way. Great pitch by Ludwig. She missed, hits that ball. Um, Campbell Bagshaw does a great job of getting off the bag, just like you said, so that ball doesn't go into right field, score multiple runs. Good job there. Ella Parker. Take strike one. Parker with a walk in the first inning. On the ground up the middle. But the Jayhawks are going to get a force at second as Rozak was able to keep her foot on the bag and field that ball. So. Yeah, I hit up the middle. It goes past Ludwig. It's then going to go through Cry. Rozak's there just in case the runner doesn't slide into second base and they call her out at second. So one down and runners at the corners now for Oklahoma, their ninth batter at the plate in this inning, Sidney Sanders. Runner goes, Moore's throw to second, not in time. We saw Sanders home run power on Thursday night. Takes that one to right field. Linda back runner tags. Both runners will advance. And Oklahoma with another run. Sacrifice fly for Sidney Sanders. Sanders takes the outside pitch to right field for the RBI. Really just a nice job. They're not going to let up. They're going to continue doing what they need to do. So two down now to Riley Ludlam, who started this inning with a base hit and later scored. Outside one and one. Change of speed. One and two. Yeah, she finds that off speed there. Location's much better. Hopefully she can continue using that throughout the game to help her out a little bit. Keep the Sooners guessing. Outside two and two. And you can just see when the Sooners take their pitches, they're all in even on their takes. They're not looking for the ball to just pass them. They have good active takes every single time the ball comes to the plate. In the center field, Price charges, drops in front. Love them with a base hit and an RBI. Her second hit of the inning. The center fielder. She hits that one off the end of her bat as well. This has happened a couple times. They've had a few miss hits that have just landed for hits this inning. They're so strong. They don't have to square the ball up every single time. 
to be able to do something with it. And she gets a base hit there. Jada Coleman, who walked earlier in this inning, homered in the first. She's accounted for two of the Sooners' 10 runs. Two and oh. Side three, no. Coleman draws her second walk of the inning. Sooner still threatening with two on and two out. The third baseman, Alyssa Brito. Alyssa Brito has two hits in this game, two runs scored. A chance to do more damage here. Yeah, they're going to stick to their game plan. They're being patient. Kansas is struggling to find the zone. Side 2 0. You see, they're not expecting Brito to bunt. The third baseman, Ashlyn Anderson, is way back. Strike called, 2 and 1. They're back, they're playing for an out, saving runs any way they can. Now back two and two. Brito smiled a little bit after the, that pitch. She just missed it. You could tell she wanted that one. Burrito down the right field line, but foul. Out of Oklahoma's 32 wins this season, they have run ruled over 15 opponents, which is incredible. They continue to put multiple runs on the board each and every game. It's so hard to keep them off the bags. It's three two pitch with two down in the center field. Price reaches over and makes the catch. The Sooners send 12 to the plate. Scores seven runs and lead here. Ten nothing Oklahoma, the number one team in the country, doing some damage in the second inning with seven runs. It's the number four hitter for the Kansas Jayhawks, Haley Kripe, shortstop. Facing Nicole May, who had a long wait on the bench. I'm sure anytime your team scores you seven runs, you'll take it, right? But she's going to have to find her rhythm again. Yeah, anytime you get a little cushion, I'm sure you're not mad about it. Hit hard to left field, base hit. She takes advantage of that pitch. She gets around it a little bit, but that's middle of the plate. Comes back out with a little spark, gets the base hit. That's exactly what you want to see. This team's not going to quit. And I think that's what Coach McFalls prides herself on. They're, they're going to continue to work throughout the game no matter what the score is. 
Daniel Bagshaw, who had the home run Thursday night to break up the no-hitter in the shutout, with two out in the seventh. Looks at strike one, one and one. Yeah, so Campbell saw a pitch last night up and over the plate, took advantage of it for their one hit of the game. Into foul territory, now blown back into fair territory, and that's going to drop. Tripe had to wait to see if that was going to be caught. That's so hard there as a base runner. She did get off the bag as much as she, she possibly could. It looked to me like she didn't know if Torres was going to be able to catch that or not. And Torres just kind of turned her back and knew she wasn't going to get there. And by then it was too late and they get the out at second. So one down for Carsley. Getting the start. Freshman DH in tonight. Yeah, the freshman DH. The coaching staff is excited about her. She's a strong kid. Um, hasn't had a lot of opportunities and excited to see what she can do today. And by the way, it's against the number one team in the country against a pitcher who's just devastating against right handed hitters. Outside. One and one. Nicole May had the third best ERA in the country last year. Second best winning percentage in Oklahoma history. 58 and three in her career. Swing and a miss. You see she shows off speed there. A great pitch. Just to keep her off balance. Hit hard down the left field line, but curling foul. She got a lot of that one. She did. Umpire found an extra piece of equipment in the batter's box and takes it over to the KU bench. Yeah, I don't know if that came off her bat or. It almost looked like an end cap of a bat, didn't it? Yes. Popped up. Sanders loves this one. Two down. Number Here's Ashlyn Anderson. Had a hard hit ball Thursday night right back at the pitcher. Yeah, lined out to Maxwell last night, really squared one up. Rido. For the out. The Jayhawks leave one aboard. They get a hit, but no runs. Number one, Oklahoma. Still heads to the circle for the Jayhawks. Oklahoma with a commanding lead here in the third inning. Tara Jennings, the single in the first, walk in the second, scored two runs. Day Roche hasn't pitched a ton this season, but as you can see, they're just trying to mix it up with their staff. Give him a different look. Strike called. One and one. What's the biggest challenge of facing a pitcher that you haven't seen maybe ever before or not a lot of? Yeah, I think you want to see as many pitches as you can to find their tendencies. See what they're doing, you know, are they going to throw mostly down? Have I seen an off speed? And I think that's so what's so different in this game today is there's so many spray charts and 
the technology is there. You you know that before you get here. You see so many at bats from so many hitters, and you have that at your fingertips these days. And the right field line bounces foul. And same for the hitters. You know, the technology, it can break down the pitchers, what their tendencies are, and that gives however much information you want to know, you certainly have. Um, and that's changed drastically throughout the years in our game. And Hit hard to left field. That one's not coming back. Jennings with a monster home run. Her second of the series. And another run for the Sooners. Jennings is so good. That ball elevates, which is right, right where she likes it. She puts a good swing on it and takes it out of the ballpark. That's her 14th on the year. It's a race for that Oklahoma home run lead. Yeah, they have three over 10 home runs this year. They were share with the strike on one. To Cassidy Pickering. She's driven in a pair. Scored a run in that big second inning. O2 now. Dave Roche comes right back with two pitches on the outside part of the plate. Maybe she's finding a little bit of rhythm here. One and two. Two and two. Strike three called. Good pitch from Deroche. De Roche comes back on the outside part of the plate. Belt high. Gets the strikeout looking. Riley Boone now for the Sooners. Looks at ball one. And really has continued to stay outside on these hitters. She hasn't tried to come inside very often. Spot two and out. That's a good call. That pitch is out. Oh, and misses as well. Three and out. You see De Roche there. She's just confused. I think she just struck someone out. Belt high. Similar pitch, she doesn't get it. Brings that one in, three and one. Really similar height there. It, I think it all depends on how you're setting up. Outside and a walk to Boone. The second baseman, Alina Torres. Alina Torres with a walk and a single. You're a two time 
player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. How much in, in, in the video era, how much did you study pitchers on video before you got to the game or the series? She pops that one up. Yeah, we had a few clips here and there. Certainly not um, tendencies as much as what they do now. Now, we saw tendencies if you face a pitcher more than in a series. You know, you find out your information that way. You get scouting reports from multiple different areas. So you kind of learn more that way, I would say, on paper. Um, little snippet clips, eight seconds long. Um, but it's grown so much and it's good to see. And as Ella Parker steps in, did you rely on memory? Did you write down what pitchers tried to do against you as you went through the season? I was a memory person just based on experience, how I did. I did reference video quite a bit. Um, what can I do different? What can I change and go off that? If you're in a game, you try to watch it the next day, see what you can improve on. And most of these athletes, they'll go home this evening and they'll have that ready for them. If they, if they decide that's what they want to do tonight is watch their video to see what they can improve for the next game tomorrow. And, And in many cases, that's already edited for them, right? You can go back and watch your at bats. Yeah, it is edited for them. Um, so all they get to, all they have to do is it, it would actually just replay and replay and replay all of their at bats. So they don't make it easy or hard on them anymore. Three and zero to Ella Parker. And it's just really incredible to see how much the sport's grown. You know, we have replay now. We have challenges. It's within the last couple of years grown so much and strike call the coaches i think across all co conferences have really advocated for what they want in this sport and that's what this spo sport is known for is to be independent and strong and stand up for what you believe in and they've done that in the game of softball Parker draws a walk, the second of the inning. Sydney Sanders. Sydney Sanders. And the sacrifice fly in that big second inning. Just flown out to right twice. Two down. Ahead of that one, 0 and 1. You've faced Patty Gasso teams before in your career. Players change, but is there one constant that you see with her teams? Yeah, I mean, players do change, but with Patty's teams, you know, they're constantly, their pitching staff is great. We went to a regional there in 2016. We faced Paige Parker. Her pitching staff is just as good now. Their hitters are just as good as they were. Um, she just continues to bring in the best players in the nation each and every year. And that's why they're so successful and created just an unbelievable program. Seven national championships. Gasso at Oklahoma. Sanders now down on the count one and two with two down. Two on for the Sooners. Strike three called. Second strike out of the inning for Savannah Desrochers. The Sooners put one on the board. And the Sooners ride an 11-0 lead. We come to the bottom of the third. Sarah Rozak for the Jayhawks. Yeah, I think Kansas was a little more aggressive last inning. They got unlucky with that pop-up. We'll see if they can continue. Ground ball to Jennings at short. One down. <laughs> Number nine hitters, Angela Price, center fielder for the Jayhawks. The center fielder, double zero, Angela Price. 
Price with a nice sacrifice on Thursday night. Inside from the full May, 1 0. May comes inside there. Price is going to stand in there strong. Just misses her, her elbow guard right there. Two and And I think that's what you see with this OU pitching staff. They're going to work in and out both sides of the plate on most hitters. Strike call two and one. Up to second, Torres is there. Two away. The left fielder. Back to the top of the order for the Jayhawks now. Presley Limbaugh. Are they going to make the switch again? Yes, they are. Here comes Coleman. They're going to do their rotation. Send Core to center field. Leave right field open. Slaps that one foul. Pretty versatile for Jada Coleman to go from center field to basically second base. Yeah, I would assume she's an all around athlete. She probably enjoys maybe trying to play something different. You see her smiling out there, putting her glove down, like, I'm going to field a ground ball right now. Slaps it. Nice play. Terry Jennings whips it over to first. And the defensive shift pays off for the Sooners. Terry Jennings with a, with a pair of strikeouts in third inning stays in the circle for Kansas. Kenzie Hansen, pinch hitter for the Sooners here in the fourth. Yeah, Hansen's been hurt a little bit. Getting some at bats this series. Good news for Oklahoma fans. See the C on her chest as a Sooner captain. She's a USA national team member, an All American. Strike call, one on one. I'm sure they'd love to have her back by postseason if they can, and just making sure she still gets those live at bats. You know, seeing a live at bat versus batting practice is just so different. Something you can't sim simulate unless you actually do it. Good news is Riley Ludlam had two base hits. <laughs> She's filled in nicely for yeah. her. Back two and two. It's out of play. Really better pitch look uh, pitch location, excuse me, by De Roche this inning. See what she does with this two-two pitch. On the ground. Anderson long throw. Not in time. Well, it was kind of an in-between hop, and Ashlyn Anderson has a good arm, but just not in time. 
Yeah, Kinsey Hansen mishits that ball. That's a great outside pitch. She fields it in the 5-6 hole, but the Sooners are so athletic. She's going to get down the line, and the throw's just a little bit late there. Tenth hit for Oklahoma. And back to the top of the order with Jada Coleman. Coleman's walked twice, scored twice, but off the game with a home run. We certainly have seen them square the ball up multiple times this game, but we've also seen a lot of miss hits, hits that barely go over the infield, hits that are in the 5-6 hole that aren't necessarily the hard hits. They just find a way to put the ball in play and make your defense work. They're going to make the pitching staff work. They continue to do it inning after inning. And you got to get your outs where you can. 2-1 now. Hit hard to left. That ball is off the scoreboard. Monster home run for Jada Coleman, her second of the game. Second home run of the game. DeRochet elevates. Oklahoma does such a nice job if the pitch gets elevated. She drives it out to left center for her second one. Alyssa Brito now with two singles, two runs scored. Just outside, 1 0. Brito hits this one deep to center field, and it's back to back home runs for the Sooners. Her third hit of the game is a big shot. And the Sooners now with a two touchdown lead. What a day for Brito. We're going to see a pitching change here for the Jayhawks. Olivia Bruno. Olivia Bruno takes over for the Jayhawks. She has thrown their third most innings of any pitcher, so she, she's got 14 innings under her belt. And at this point, I just think it's about a different look, right? See what someone else can do. Tiara Jennings with a home run in the third inning. She scored three runs. Nobody out here in the top of the fourth. Three runs in for Oklahoma. Oklahoma has just put on a show today of what it takes to be a full team, a number one team in the nation. They've capitalized on everything that they possibly can. And Jennings made a nice play at short. Obviously a great day at the plate. 
Bruno with a strike. Yeah, the play she made it short. That's typically a base hit. Um, she just reaches her glove out and makes a great play and can really do it all. It's a full athlete. Three and one. Good pitch from Bruno. Yeah, she, she got her on one. She wasn't expecting. Look, look, looked like an off speed to me. Kept it down in the zone. She's been throwing hard. I don't know if she knew she had that in her back pocket. <laughs> and she throws it again. And this is low, so a walk to Jennings, her second of the game. The right fielder, Hannah Kaur. Hannah Kaur. Takes over for Pickering. Down by Rozak. But that'll leave two on with nobody out. Ball goes up the middle. Rozak leaves her feet and just can't grab the ball. Runners advance and let's see Lilio. Looks like she's gonna step in for Riley Boone. Your attention, please. Pinch hitting for Oklahoma. Number 43, Quincy Lilio. We saw Lilio a little bit yesterday. She came in, had a pinch hit. Outside from Bruno, one on one. You see Bruno's mixing in a little more off speed than what we've seen from the Kansas pitching staff. Up high, three and one. You know, I think it's good to get these kids some bat. Lilio, a sophomore. Oklahoma has six seniors in their lineup right now. A walk will load the bases. Lena Torres in the batter's box. Oklahoma has a run differential coming into this game. Of plus 252, 298 runs. I guess just 46 allowed. Yeah, I mean, like I said yesterday, they're top five in batting average, if not the best now. They are top five in ERA, top five in fielding percentage. They're the number one team for the reason, for a reason, and they continue to get it done at the plate and in the circle and.
swing and a miss. Torres wanted all of that one there, and Bruno brings it up in the zone. That was a full go. That was. She comes back with an off speed off the plate, trying to mix that pitch a little bit more, which is something we really haven't seen from the staff. Makes the speeds again. That one missed two and one. Early on it, two and two. Bases loaded, nobody out. Sooners with three across here in the fourth inning. field the ball with a catch it's a back quickly keeps the runners in position one down yeah Bruno Bruno gets her with the off speed here down in the zone makes her chase a little bit and that's what you want to see you got to find a way to get him to chase out of the zone and she did that there Maya Bland. Looks like she's going to pinch hit for Ella Parker. Bland, a freshman. From Argyle, Texas. Bland hasn't had many at bats this year, but when she has, she's taken advantage of them. And like I said, Oklahoma has six seniors in their starting lineup right now, so it's good to get these kids some at bats, see how they do, let them see as many pitches as they can. And Strike two call. Bland's got some speed to her. We saw her on the bases yesterday, typically the first pinch runner out of the dugout. Looks like she's just standing in to swing it. We're going to miss strikeout for Bruno. O2 pitch, way on the outside part of the plate, right where you want it. That's picture perfect right there. That's right where you want that pitch. Avery Hodge has grabbed a bat. For Sydney Sanders. Down low, one and oh. Just misses, 2-0. Oh. It's a good miss there. You see she's questioning where that pitch is at. Not missing by much. Just a small adjustment. Goes up high, 3-0. Ninth batter in this inning. Strike from Bruno, three and one. You know, and I think that's the difference in the game. You just get the strikeout, and then you come back and you throw three balls. The bases are loaded. You don't have much to work with. You want to eliminate 
those instances as much as they can, and Kansas just hasn't done that today. Strike call three and two. Side. And draws a walk and brings home a run. So it's back to Kinsey Hansen. We started out this inning with a single and a run scored. Number nine, Kinsey Hansen. I called. <laughs> On the ground. Cripe to second. And that'll bring the inning to an end, but the Sooners add four more. They have third time this year. Oklahoma has scored 15 runs, matching their season high. As we head to the bottom of the fourth here. Lee Fleisick, Casey Williams with you. Your attention, please. Re entering the game at catcher for Oklahoma number 30, Riley Ludlow. Harley Ludlum back in the game now. To start as the catcher. Kenzie Hansen. Got a couple of bats. Strike to Ainsley Lindoff. Who lined out to the shortstop in the first inning. One of Two really nice plays that T.R.A. Jennings has made. Swing and a miss, so and two. Nicole May just continues to hammer the zone. Bow back. Climbing the ladder a little bit. She just showed a glimpse of that. Linda swung, so she goes just a little bit higher. This is inside. One and two. Trying to preserve her 10th career shutout. On the ground to first. Torres has moved over there, makes the play. She goes up, then she's going to come down with off speed. Lindeff gets around it, grounds out to first base. Really just a great sequence. Pitching change. Nice hand from Nicole May. Allowed just one hit, no runs. Here in the bottom of the fourth. That's Jay Guerin. Redshirt freshman will over. She's only thrown seven innings, so trying to get her some more. The 
She has not allowed a run in any of her appearances. Two no record facing Lyric Moore here. Strike one. She shows off speed right off the bat there. Eric Moore with a solid base hit. Just the second of the night for the Jayhawks. Lyric Moore takes a pitch, advantage of a pitch, right down the middle, she drives it out to left field, and that's really what you want to see. When you're seeing at bats off of these pitchers, you want, you hope that they continue to have quality at bats, they see good pitches, they take advantage of pitches in the zone, and that's what Lyric did right there. Strike to Haley Kripe, who has another Kansas hit, back in the second inning. Yeah, and that's a good take by Kripe. First pitch, off speed. I don't know if I'd be swinging at that either. A high one and one. Out of the way, one and two. Swing and a miss. Two down. The first baseman. Seguin gets her here, outside, chalk, up in the zone, and... Camelback Shaw makes it strike one. So you're obviously seeing a sequence here. The last two batters change up right off the bat. Is that something you talk about in the dugout? as a hitting coach or as a staff, you know, our last two players have seen back-to-back -back first pitch change-ups. Um, do you sit on that? Do you not? Will they change their sequence? She likes that off speed. She's going to it often. And I think in that instance, you might have to change your game plan at the plate a little bit if she's gonna throw it that frequently. Let's see if the Kansas hitters make an adjustment here. 0-2 pitch. Dyke Shaw won't chase it. One and two. Fights that one off. Bagshaw had the late home or the home run late in the game. Close two and two. She, she comes inside. It's a great miss on a one two pitch. Really close. Too far outside, full count now, with two down. Lurk more at first base. Great pitch. Strikeout. First second of the inning. And keep the off the board. 
Yeah, previously the DH. Looks like Coach McFalls is letting her get some innings in. Lyric's so strong behind the plate, but sometimes it's good to get some rest in. Um, we'll see how she does. Jada Coleman. He's had two home runs in this game. A monster shot in the fourth. What's it? Strike one. Yeah, I saw that at the beginning, and I think this is something to do with the time clock. It looked to me like she didn't get on the mound quick enough. They called a ball one right at the beginning, so it's actually a 1 1 count, I believe. Oh, and this is 2 and 1 now. I'm not sure the clock is operational right now. 2 1 pitch. This is low, 3 and 1. It's usually underneath the big scoreboard here at Arocha Ballpark. Outside, and Coleman draws her second walk. Third walk, excuse me. Now base five times in this game. Alyssa Brito. Alyssa Brito with a homer to follow up Coleman in the fourth. There's the clock popped up. Strike call to Brito. Home run, two singles. In front of that one, 0 oh and 2. Yeah, Brito just gets around that one a little bit, hits it off the end of her bat. We'll see what Bruno can do here on this 0-2 count. Popped up out of play. Bruno still had the count 0-2. Yeah, and I think this is where you want to see as, as a pitching coach, you know, you're down 0-2 in the count. You want to win this at bat. If you're down 0-2 in the count, you have some waste pitches. Use them wisely, just like she did there. That pitch is OK there. An off speed in the dirt just to get her eye level to change a little bit. Cars there with a good play behind the plate. Side two and two. James speeds. She's shown that more frequently as she's continued on through her outing. And I definitely think it helps, you know, to keep them off balance. If all they're seeing is one speed, um, they're too talented to, to set one speed. And you got to be able to mix if you have it. Burritos battled back to get the count to full three and two. Jada Coleman at first. In the foul territory. Side. Second straight walk.
the shortstop, Tiare Jennings. Tiare Jennings with a homer back in the third. She's scored three runs, driven in two. Home run on Thursday night as well. Good swing, but fouled away. Outside one and one. She's been so good for this OU offense for so long. She's ranked in multiple categories in their top ten. Into right field, Linda fights the sun, makes the catch. Runner will advance, and now Frito goes to second base. Heads up play. Hannah Core, who singled in the fourth, is a pinch hitter for Cassidy Pickering. Strike from Bruno. Side one and one. This is a good experience for Hannah Core. Runners on second and third. Can she do something with it? Puts it in play. Tough ball for Kripe to handle. And then I'll bring in a run. Quincy Lulio. Score that an error on Kripe. Third for Kansas in this game. Yeah, it looked to me there that she kind of caught a hop in between her and just didn't know how to play it a little bit. She took the deep angle and okay. Quincy Lulio drew a walk in the fourth. Runners in the corners with one down for her. Strike from Bruno, two and one. You could kind of see Bruno asking the pitch before, you know, where is that? Where's that location? And I just think when you face such a great hitting team like Oklahoma, you want every pitch you can get. Right back up the middle. That'll score a run. RBI for Lilio. Lina Torres with a single in the second inning. She walked in the first. Two on for her now with one out. was on a tear last week. He'd be hard pressed to pick a most valuable player in this series thus far for Oklahoma. 
multiple players yeah. with multiple hits, multiple home runs, multiple RBI games. Let's start with Jada Coleman. T.R.A. Jennings, that one hit hard to left field, base hit. Base is full now for Maya Bland. She comes inside on that pitch. Torres does a nice job of keeping her hands inside the ball. See the question. I didn't see the question either. Was there a bat toss? As Torres released the bat, yeah, I just kind of went down the third base line. The bang bang play. Bagshaw makes the tag at first and then the throw home. Nice double play from the Jayhawks. We'll show it to you again as we head to the bottom of the fifth here in Lawrence, Oklahoma, on top of Kansas. Great double play to end that inning. Some good glove work and a nice tag at the plate. Yeah, you see Campbell Bagshaw, she steps on first. So great heads up play by the freshman. She makes the tag at home because that is no longer a force out. Good defense by the Jayhawks. Young Jayhawks showing some glove work. Parsley popped out. So there's one down and the Sooners are going to change pitchers here. Peyton Monticelli comes into the game. Try to secure the last two outs. Sully, a sophomore of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Fifteen innings pitched, less than 0 .50 ERA. Well, it's been a pretty impressive display from Oklahoma. 17 runs on 15 hits. While allowing the Jayhawks only two hits. Cole May started the game. Was cruising along. Sooners getting some experience here. Ashlyn Anderson for Kansas. Fouled it off on one. She's wasting no time hopping on the first pitch, being aggressive and. Fouls that one back as well, 0 2. Anderson stays alive. Monticelli back-to-back -back rise balls there. Up in the zone. 
We'll see if she continues that sequence or potentially shows something else. Strike three called. Monticelli paints that outside corner. Like I said, she throws two rise balls, comes back on the outside part of the plate, gets Anderson for the strikeout. So it's up to Sarah Rozak. Strike one. Strike two. You've noticed with all of these staffs, they're they're willing to throw to either side of the plate. And... Swing and a miss. Monticelli closes it out. And the Sooners cap off a dominating performance. 17-0 over the Kansas Jayhawks. Kansas will get one chance on Saturday to avoid the sweep, but this is a pretty powerful Oklahoma lineup. Yeah, I definitely think they're going to have to go back to the drawing board, make some adjustments, and eliminate the big innings, really. Um, they're going to get their chances. They're going to get their runs. But how do you eliminate those and come back on day three and make an adjustment? Casey Williams, thank you very much. Enjoyed it. The Kansas Jayhawks will try to avoid the sweep on Saturday afternoon, noon, right here on ESPN+. Plus. Big thank you to the SIDs, Thomas Breach from Oklahoma, Jack Gilligan from Kansas. Thank you as well to our Rock Chalk video crew led by Curtis Lorenz. For Casey Williams, I'm Lee Fleisick saying so long from Lawrence where Oklahoma wins at 17-0 in five innings. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. We'll see you Saturday.